Well, it's October again, which means it's time for another spooky themed video in recognition of Halloween. This year, we're going to be looking at a uniform requested a few times, that of the security personnel of the SCP Foundation, specifically those seen and inspired by the ones in the game SCP Containment Breach. Now, some of you know exactly what we're talking about, but more than likely a good portion aren't quite familiar with what the SCP Foundation is or does. So to preface the uniform breakdown, let's quickly establish what this foundation is all about. SCP stands for both Secure, Contain, Protect, as well as Special Containment Procedures. It is a fictional secret organization that identifies, secures, and contains any paranormal, supernatural, or just bizarre objects or phenomena, all while keeping said entities from public view. Starting via a single anonymous post on 4chan in 2007, the entire concept has ballooned into a massive community based around user submissions of stories, log entries, and general media relating to SCPs, the designations given to specific objects and entities. Because of its status as a somewhat decentralized format of user-contributed and maintained lore, stories, and canon, no one person or group owns the rights. This has led to media being created based directly off or inspired by it, be it in the form of the obvious stories, to things like artwork, pictures, short films, video games, and so on. One of the most influential and popular media entries is that of the video game SCP Containment Breach, which was released back in 2012. The premise of this game revolves around a human test subject attempting to escape a Foundation containment facility during a full-scale breach, resulting in numerous SCP entities escaping as well. Along the way, he encounters a number of security guards who both interact with him, sometimes in a hostile manner, while also dealing with the escaped SCPs. Since the game's release, these guards and their overall look as far as uniforms, equipment, and weaponry have become more or less the go-to among the community as a whole. So let's take a look at and identify everything that makes up their uniform. Due to the graphics of the game being updated over the years, as well as the basic geometric design of some components, we'll try to match the various items up as best as possible to their real-world equivalents. Starting at the top was a black helmet with a full acrylic style face shield. A few avenues for these can be taken. The easiest would be a riot helmet, as it already has the built-in flip face visor. However, two things to note are the lack of wraparound protective padding, which is featured on many riot style helmets, as well as the four point chin strap. It's likely the design, much like most other components of their uniform, were based on an assortment of pieces, so finding an exact piece may not be possible. There are models out there, such as the Seer S1711, that are very close, but they're usually available only through tactical or police supply websites. One quick solution to this would be to get a US Pasget helmet or clone and the attachable face shield, then put the two together. Surplus or lightweight plastic Pasget style helmets are bountiful. Don't forget though, it has to have a black four-pointed chin strap. Whichever way you go, just remember the visor was an almost neon greenish yellow color, so you'll either have to look for one or apply a tinted wrap to it. Below, wearers had on a black one-hole balaclava. These allowed just the eyes and areas in between to be exposed. Chances are these weren't the knit style, but rather a lycra or spandex type, as they would be a bit more form-fitting and breathable. Moving down, the base uniform was a white one-piece suit. These were likely some form of flight suit or tactical type coverall. Now, in theory, something like a white one-piece suit would be pretty simple to find, and technically it is. However, once you throw in tactical or for military applications, it gets a bit harder. Being that white sticks out and can easily show dirt, stains, and general discoloration brought on by normal wear and tear, the color is really only seen for more special applications such as formal or ceremonial purposes, medical, operating in snow-covered terrains, and dealing with hazardous materials. White flight suits do exist, though they were either used long ago or oriented for more specialty purposes like space and high-altitude flights, as seen in NASA's Apollo era. This has made them a bit sought after and harder to source. A number of companies online offer a wide variety of flight suit models with custom services being available, so chances are good one could pay to have a white suit made. It ultimately comes down to how extensively you want to go with the militarized look of the coverall. If you want to stay simple, the easiest options would be something like a painter's, construction, or mechanic coverall, or even the occasional more fashion-oriented one. Links to a few options can be found in the description. On top of the one-piece, forces wore a large, mostly black protective vest. 
Again, because of a mix of a slight lack of detail and likely multiple inspirations and original design elements, the vest is very much open to interpretation. As you look around it, you'll see something of a hodgepodge of different elements and features such as webbing, strapping, and what appears to be, granted in a somewhat warped look, PALS, or the pouch attachment ladder system, which can be used for attaching various pouches and accessories. So one could look at it and see an impact resistant riot style system, while another sees a plate carrying US Army interceptor style one. That being said, let's look at all the components and elements that are known. There is the base, chest, and torso section, which includes a triple magazine pouch for their primary weapon, the FNP-90, which includes an advanced combat optical gun sight, or ACOG scope. Then there's a wraparound shoulder and collarbone protector, in a slightly lighter gray color, short shoulder pauldrons, a groin protector, and finally a lower torso kidney type protector, which wraps around the back and sides. If price isn't an issue, you could do something like the FAS full armor system, which is actually a legitimate system that has an NIJ protection rating. Simply pick out a basic carrier style vest and you're good to go. Or you can source them individually and save a few hundred dollars. The cheapest and most accurate looking style vests are OTVs or outer tactical vests. There are numerous companies that make basic airsoft ones that will do the job just fine. In addition to the main vest, they will also include the shoulder pauldrons or protectors, the groin protector and neck protectors. Also keep in mind with these vests, the shoulder protector pieces are often rather large and go down most of the mid arm, almost terminating at the elbow. If you wanna be accurate to the character models, you'll have to either cut them down or replace them with ones roughly half the size. Additionally, you'll need to add some form of protection padding for the stomach and waist area, such as a Molly outer tactical belt. These would wrap around and terminate at the hips on either side. The game shows them as completely devoid of features, so you could keep them as is or remove the PALS loops. Finally, you'll just need to add on those grayish green shoulder and collarbone protectors. Most people omit these due to them not being incorporated easily into the ensemble, along with their sheer size and strange design. On the cheap side, you could achieve this look using foam and cloth and with a bit of creativity attach it. Alternatively, on the more expensive side, get something like goalie padding used in hockey or lacrosse, as often they'll have thicker pad sections that cover and wrap around the shoulders. Just remember that you'll have to find a way to attach it to the rest of the vest, be it a makeshift strap system, Velcro, sewing, rivets, and so on. Next up are the gray protective pads, which were seen on the elbows and knees. The elbow pads appear to be incorporated into the sleeves of the jumpsuit, so you could either get inserts and retrofit them, or just a gray set to wear over them. The knee pads, on the other hand, appear to be ones worn over as they include a single strap that goes around the leg. On the feet were black tactical style boots. These are perhaps the most open to interpretation, but a simple go-to pair that's cheap, easy, and looks the part would be Rothko brand speed lace boots. Finally, the last part of their uniform is a set of black gloves. These appear to go past the wrists, so chances are they are riot gloves, which would protect the back of wearer's hands as well as a good portion of the forearm. A few options are available, but a good example would be hatch brand ones. And with that, we've pretty much covered the guards as seen in the game SCP Containment Protocol. As mentioned, being that the whole SCP mythos is not owned, but rather one that is constantly changing and evolving based on user content through entries, stories, and media such as games, things are always open to interpretation as they can change or be built upon. The same can be said with these guard uniforms. Many have taken to creating their own iterations of them, adding or changing things such as different color jumpsuits, shin protectors, riot shields, elbow pads, drop leg holsters, SCP patches, and so on. So whether you want to go accurate to the game or use it as a starting point, hopefully this video has helped. Going off that, it's worth noting the game was remade using the Unity engine not too long ago. This saw many elements updated and changed. One such example was that of the guards, which resulted in their uniforms being completely overhauled. That is for another time though. But once again, a happy spooky season, Halloween, or just general appreciation of all things creepy, horror themed, or supernatural to all. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, feel free to leave a like and subscribe, or just check back soon for more uniforms of the screen right here on Uniform History.